Hi everyone, we're really excited um, to play this game today. It's me and Isaac in this competition. We'll see who wins today. Um, so basically what we have here is a bowl of water with some apples in there. So the goal is to um, grab the apple with our mouth um, without using our hands. Our hands will be behind our back. Um, and basically this game is called Apple Bopping. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it heard of it before, but I've seen several videos of it and it's hilarious. So I'm excited to see how this will turn out to be. Um, so so yeah, so are you ready, Isaac? Um, I just want to tell everybody, I've been training all my life for this moment. Uh, since the age of five, I used to get a bucket with apples in it and I would try to pick it up with my mouth. So I believe that I am prepared for this game. I am a winner. Uh, and after this, I have a prepared speech uh, written just in case because I know that I'm going to beat Janet and I'm kind of salty because the other day her team beat me on a Wednesday night, which is unacceptable on every single level, but it's okay. She's not used, she's not used to the taste of victory like I am. See, I, I'm like, I'm addicted to it. She's only had one victory, so she doesn't even know. So it's all right. We'll see. So family, whatever he said times two for me, okay? Ooh. So back at him for that. So. Divided by two. All right. <laughs> um, times the little two exponent. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, that exponent. All right. <laughs> All right. So, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Janet, I want to see you cheat because you usually cheat. Excuse you. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, ready? Okay. Do you do the countdown, Ariana? Five, four, three, two, one. Go. <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> oh my god, Isaac. <laughs> oh my god. I was breathing in water and everything. I was like... You have to get the last one, Janet. Well, you already No, won. you have to get it. That's how we do it. We finish right. it again. <laughs> <laughs> I said I never trusted you. Oh my god. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. All right. So, uh, as expected, I win again. Nothing, nothing different. We were all, we all kind of knew going into this video who would win, right? Isaac, every single time. You want a rematch or what? Yeah, let's do it. We got two more rounds. All right. So, I can it dropped on back. the floor, but good thing we have this holy water <laughs> that'll clean it. Am I right? Can oh I get an amen God. in the back? Amen. All right. <laughs> All right. So wait, before we continue, I, I'm the interviewer slash the oh winner. How did God. you feel losing to Isaac Ruiz, like usual? I didn't lose. I'm coming back for the win, so. So uh, you heard it here, folks. She's optimistic, but not likely for her to take another dub. She was too afraid of the water, but I wasn't. <laughs> I have we'll no see. fear. We'll see. <laughs> All right. All right. So. You can see my winner bite marks on here. <laughs> All right. Three. Two, one. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that was that was Janet. I what? Won. I told what? you I was coming back. <laughs> it's one one. One one. Where's my apple? <laughs> <laughs> Ended up all the way in the back. Janet, did you eat your apple or what the hell? <laughs> no. Look at that apple. You you destroyed it. I'm telling you, I was really feisty for this win, so I had to go all in. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! No, I'm actually really pumped right now. I'm not going to lie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want to win. <sighs> all right. Last round, uh. guys. So we're tight right now. So this is our third round. Um, so right now we're one and one. So three, two, go. One, one, let's go, baby. No, no. Let's that go, was baby. A tie. That was no, a tie. let's go, baby. No, that was a Rewind tie. that. <laughs> Put it in slow mo. That I still. I am lawyering up. No, that was. I'm on my lawyer present. I am the, I am the judge so fine. Everyone, everyone's not a good judge because she always loses to me too. No. So they're gonna try to help each other out. No, that was a tie, guys. Comment down who won that because I believe I won that match. So let's. Janet straight up eating that her is apples that. on the way out. She's hungry. <laughs> look at look at my clean apples. <laughs> just clean bites. Janet's like, ah, ah. 
Because I said, I got to make sure that I prove that I beat you on this. Exactly. So you have to work twice as hard just to compete with me. No. Woo! <laughs> Dang. Oh she said it herself. God. I got to work hard to beat you. You know no, what I'm saying? I just have to make sure. You got to always work hard. Mm. <laughs> so now I'm beating you right now. All right. So. Three, two, go. <laughs> <laughs> What's good? Come All on, right. I like choked in the water. <laughs> Did you guys see him? Did you guys see him? He was like the one doing all the extra stuff. I was. All right, one more round. Or she won, huh? She won. I won. That's not, that's not fair. I totally won that other one. I'm not going to lie. I want us to rewind this, okay? It's unofficial right now, your win. Because I'm going to have Elliot go back when we're <laughs> editing. And I'm going to make sure that... I had put my apple out first because I no. promised I was staring at you while I was doing my apple because I like to look at my, you know, no, it was not. I, I refuse. How you about right now? How about let's tie? How about let's just do a tiebreaker right here? No, because you don't want to Tiebreaker right here. No. Tiebreaker right here because I totally beat you on that one. No, like, you I'm didn't. Like, this isn't even scripted think... right now. I don't care how much time I'm wasting. I definitely <laughs> no. won that one. Janet, let's just do one I more round. One okay, more round to settle it all. Okay, let's do it then. But all at right. the end of the day, I still won because no, I no, have, no, no, I have no. This, this last you. round settles it all. So then the previous rounds don't even count. Yeah, previous rounds don't even count. But that's Start fresh right that's here. That's not fair though. Start fresh right here. That's not last no, one. No, Championship you round. Know you no, lost and no, no, I didn't. I didn't lose. <laughs> no. Uh, uh come on. Oh one my last god. One. one last one. Okay, let's do it, guys. Let's prove it one more time. <sighs> Dang. If I lose this one, this is sad. Last one. Oh! <laughs> I couldn't even get my teeth on any of all that. Fine, Janet. You won this one. So as the interviewer here, how do you feel losing to me? I just like to say, she still doesn't know the sweet taste of victory as much as I have, but it's okay, I will take my belt back by any means necessary. Oh my God. Janet. Sorry guys, Team Isaac lost won. this time. Dang, I'm actually really hurt by this. <laughs> I think this is gonna break my spirit, but it will not break my determination to win every single game, all right? I love you guys, and honestly, if you ever are bored at home, try this. All you need is apples, a little bowl. It was actually yeah. really fun, it was ridiculously yeah. fun. I think this is one of the funnest games we've ever played um, for me, but hey, we love you. We got an awesome message for you, stay tuned. Yes. We'll see you guys in a bit. Hi guys, I'm really excited to be back with you all. Um, as you guys saw, I did beat Isaac on the game. So that is very exciting to me. Unfortunately, that's very sad to him because he's not used to losing, but that's okay, right? I'm excited to come back round two to beat him. <laughs> in a good way though. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to speak to you guys in regards to isolation. Um, since I know isolation, it's very, very present in this moment um, with a lot of young kids and a lot of young adults like myself, right? Um, so it's, it's sometimes we can get very lost in the midst of isolation when we don't really have, you know, um, a, a, our good surroundings or when we don't really truly know God fully and completely, right? Um, we tend to lead towards um, negative thoughts or other thoughts that will literally bring us into isolation um, along with tied up with depression anxiety and so on and so forth right um, and something that um, something that was um, shared with us in Main Street Revival on this once on this one Wednesday was when I believe it was John who mentioned this that said God will sometimes put you in the store to reveal himself to you right um, and I left home that night and I was thinking very hard on it. And I asked myself, wow, when have I felt lonely? Or when have I, you know, unintentionally isolated myself from my family, from my friends, um, from people who love me, who, you know, if I were to go to would ask help, you know, would, would ask to help me sometimes. Um, and, and I thought about you guys and I was like, okay, I, I, I will speak upon this and, and share some thoughts with you guys on how good God can be in the midst of your isolation. And sometimes isolation can look in forms of um, isolating from yourself, from God especially, um, and sometimes failed relationships, failed friendships, when, when school is getting too hard, um, or when you thought things were going to go differently um, in some aspects of your life. 
literally take a turn on the opposite way mm -hmm. um, and you have no control over it right and sometimes because things in our surroundings are not going well we tend to literally you know cut communication with our friends mm -hmm. and and they're like hey I haven't seen you in so long like are, how are you doing or even our family mm -hmm. like you know I'm not sure what's wrong with my son or my daughter like they're you know they they seem to isolate themselves they don't want to speak to me about what's going on in them and that can get scary sometimes right uh, and I know that sometimes we I know at times we've been in that isolation before right without even us even knowing um, and that is an important part to understand when it's happening because at times again we don't really know when it's happening right we sort of fall into that trap um, kind of blinded um, so we isolate ourselves even sometimes from our own selves and that can be scary um, we are not by ourselves in fact and i'm here to let you know that we are not by ourselves uh, but we put walls walls up that we think are too big for us to even overcome or or for god to even overcome you know but we have to come back to understand that god has already won the battle and i it's funny because that 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 word has been shown up in in mainstream revival in in you know preachers that i see online you know god has already won the battle and that is so important and so so important to stick to in your in your very own heart right when being alone i want to let you know that there is room for the enemy which can come in many forms right negative thoughts uh, made up scenarios in our head of how things can go wrong the other way um, bitterness even suicidal thoughts so isolation can be attached with suicidal thoughts, right? And, and, and understanding how to combat that, understanding that God is literally watching over us and he's, it's so crucial for him to help us, right? But at times we don't really make ourselves available to receive his help. Um, in Peter 5.8, you know, in Peter 5.8, it says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to seeking someone to devour right so as i was reading this i'm like wow it's 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 warning us it's warning us in regards to be very sober minded if you guys understand the word sober it means that it's not affected by anything right you're not affected by anything that 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 you consume or anything that comes your way right so being sober minded we're warned to be sober minded because the enemy is out there he is out there to kill and destroy right and to ruin relationships to ruin your thought process to ruin your relationship with god most importantly or even if you don't really have a relationship with god yet but in your midst of wanting to build one the enemy can come in between that right and he can make you think that no you're by yourself a god can help you right but i'm here to tell you that that's incorrect sober as i said sober minded does be does mean not affected by anything god does not desire you to be isolated to be put down um to live in pain to live in unhappiness right he desires the opposite for you and that opposite means living truly living and living what i mean by living is living in happiness living in joy living in peace living in stillness living in his freedom right um and he doesn't want you to be captive by all of these things isolation that comes with it right um in psalm 34 17 through 20 it says that when the righteous cries for help the lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles the lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him out of them all he keeps all his bones not one of them is broken you know and it's beautiful to know that literally when we need help when we write when we cry for righteousness right um god will deliver us out of that right but i but i do understand that there's a certain of of wanting to step into that as well right um, because we are told here that the Lord will help us, the Lord will sustain us, but we have to be willing to come to him. We have to be willing to say, okay, yes, Lord, you know, I need your help. You know, I don't know how you can help me in the midst of this, or even for you young kids that are barely understanding who God is and how you can build a relationship with him. I know it can get confusing at times to be, well, how can he help me? Well, this is, this is exactly this verse, Psalm 37, 34, 17 to 20 is telling you, when you cry, 
when, when you need my help, I will deliver you from that. So God is literally telling you, when you come and ask me for my help, when you come to me, if you notice that when you come and you ask me and, and you know, for my help, I will deliver you from that. And that's very, very important. And that just brings so much stillness to my heart and understanding that we are able to get his help. Um, the verse allows us also to see God's tenderness for us. You know, if you notice, God truly loves us. He's not, he's not opposing us. He wants everything that comes with his goodness in our lives, right? Um, I challenge you to come to him today um, and every single day of your life. You no longer have to be isolated anymore. Isolation does not define you and isolation does not have a name for you. God has a name for you. And his name comes with so many beautiful things that bring such freedom to your life. I want you to know that you deserve freedom and it has been given to you already by, the, by, by our Father. Um, but it is a choice for you to believe and ask God to help you experience it, right? Although you're having a hard time. Do not give up on yourself, you know, and I truly mean this. Do not give up on yourself and on, the, on your journey of reaching to God because God has always been rooting for you to rise up and so am I. I'm rooting for you to rise up. Don't ever underestimate what God can do for your life. If you only allow him to come into your space, and um, how will that look like, you know? What if you went to God today and talked to him about your isolation, you know? How much baggage will you leave behind and just truly, you know, not be defined by everything that, that has been upon you through isolation, right? Truly can connect with him through prayer and worship. You know, I challenge you to ask him to guide you into the freedom of isolation he has for you. Picture yourself free from isolation. What would that look like, right? Isolation will always be roaming around, like I said before. But know that it doesn't belong to you. It truly doesn't belong to you. You will become tested by it. Um, so it is crucial to you, for you to always choose to be connected to the Father so, so that you are well, well aware of what is that what is it that you're grasping on and what is it that is truly coming from him right mm -hmm. because at times we can choose some things that or some feelings that we're like oh it's okay it's just another day but sometimes that's not coming from him and we and we should be crucial and aware and really aware mm -hmm. to not grasp on those things but truly surrender to the things that mm -hmm. god has called into our life and in the moment guiding us through right Lastly, I want to leave you reminded of God's intentional intentional creation of your life. Yeah, you know, yes. Your God's intentional creation for your life. Your life is very, very important. And he, by no mistake, did he form you and did he make you to be so present in this moment of your lifetime right now. In Psalm 139, verse 16, it says, Your eyes saw my unformed body, right? Before you were even born. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to pass, came to be. And, you know, it just, it's beautiful because your life is meaningful and it will be used perfect, pur purposely for God's plan on this earth, you know. Um, and it is special. You were not created to live in isolation and fear and depression and et cetera, that whatever comes with it, you know. In fact, you were ordained to live in its opposite, Um in peace and, and stillness and joy and freedom um, and all its goodness you know step into that power today i challenge you and i and i and i want you to um, and step into that intimacy with god as well i want you to step into who he is and 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 okay god who who, who is it that you are you know who am i in you allow him to define you don't let the label of isolation or the feelings of isolation keep you captive and allow it to label you, you know? And I challenge you to take a step closer to him today. You don't need to have it all together, but you need a heart, a heart to trust in him, a heart to say, yes, Lord, and let me, and allow him to help you. And, you know, I, I want you to step out of isolation and I know it can be hard sometimes. And even if you, and even if you have to question yourself, have I ever been have I ever isolated myself from people or from even myself and from God? I want you to really 
think into that thought so that you are well well aware of the next time you come across those feelings of isolation, you know how to combat them and you know who to go to, which is our father, right? So I, if you find yourself in the moment, you know, saying, yes, I have been isolated um, many times before, or I'm currently in isolation from my friends, from my family, because I don't want to speak to them about what's challenging me, what's what's really hurting me, or what, what it is that it's um, crushing you. I want you to join me into this prayer, and I want you to, you know, pray it for yourself as well with me. So... So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We, we thank you for, for your goodness in our life and for always being so present and for calling us out into all these things that do not belong to us and calling us not only in your presence but in what comes with it, Father, in your joy, in your freedom, in, in, in your stillness, Father, in your peace, most importantly, Father. I pray that every single kid, Lord, that is experiencing um, this isolation right now or, or who will in the future you know, isolation will come knocking on the, on the door, Lord. I pray that you will fill them with, with your presence and, that, and with your direction on how to overcome this because you have already won the battle. You've already, these are your kids, Lord. You, you've named them to you, Father, and you know exactly that they're not meant to live in, in isolation, in fear, in anxiety, and whatever comes with it, Father. So I pray, Father, that you were to help them rise up and help them and fill them with your spirit and fill them with your with your divine you know connection and with your divine encouragement to come out and to seek you and to look for you father and to truly and fully and fully get to know you father so that they're well well aware that isolation does not have a name on them so um we love you father god and we, we want to walk this walk with you, and we seek you every single day of our lives, Lord, and we love you most importantly. In your name we pray today, Lord. Amen. So I'm really, really excited. Um, I was able to share this message with you, and I just pray that in advance that this message truly touches your heart and gives you a sense of direction that you are not alone. And not only are we here for you as your youth leaders, but... Um, the Lord, most importantly, he's always been here in your life. Um, but you have to make a choice to step into that today um, and truly ask him to, to guide you and truly ask him to help you understand um, where, in, where aspects in your life have you isolated yourself from not only himself, but from your own family and your own friends that truly love you and want to help you. So um, thank you guys. Um, and in case you guys are not aware, we do have... Um, our, our youth groups um, and our youth meetings every single Wednesday at 6 20 p.m. at the parking lot in Annex A so please come out and join us every Wednesday um, we're super excited to connect with you to talk to you get to get to know you most importantly and to help you guide you into um, into God and we're really excited for this and also as well please um, follow us on Instagram um, underscore elevate youth underscore um, send us a message if you are not connected to an e-group which we do meet once a week on zoom and we connect and we love on you and we you know guide you and you know we we share the beauty of god through our conversation so um, if you're not connected please send us a message um, and we'll love to connect with you so thank you guys we love you and i will see you guys soon